Hey, right. It's Monday. 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 Mon Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Hope everybody is motivated and energized. Um, we are happy to be here. Happy to be back. And so this week, the the we've been. It's kind of like the culmination of everything that we've been talking about. So we've been going over the ABCs of wholesaling and investing. And we did the acquire week. Mm -hmm. We've did the buy week, and yeah. now we are in the close week. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the best part. It's where you actually make money. It's where you make money. Everything else is the legwork. This is the gravy. Ray, thanks for joining us. This is the gravy. This is this is the you know the the pinnacle. So today we are talking about closing contracts. Mm -hmm. So. The one question that we are going to talk about today is where to find them, how to fill them out. Because we get asked ad nauseum and we see it in tons of other groups is, I need a contract for this. Where do I find a contract for this? Rob being an attorney, he gets this question probably hourly. Uh, 943 times a day. 943 times a day, which is greatly interfering with his ability to build a working rocket ship. Can't do anything. And so... Um, we are going to address some of those questions today. So Rob, without further ado, these contracts, Yes. where do people find them? The first thing you've got to do is that whatever state you're in, whatever state you're in, uh, go ahead and type in your state name and real estate commission. Because what happens is, is that uh, there's several states, and Texas is one of them, where the real estate commission actually has a form contract that they want you to use. And it doesn't mean that you can't use something else. You can absolutely use something else, but it's like they're telling you, Hey, we want you to use this type of contract. Everybody in the state uses this type of contract. They're used to it. They see it. They know how it works. They know what to, to look for. Mm -hmm. And if you give them something different, you know what you've done? You are just throwing a wrench in the system. It's like you've gone through McDonald's and you've asked for something like a fish sticks, and you know like uh, cream cheese it's like up until recently it'd What's be like going about? to taco bell and asking for french fries right you can do it now it's crazy yeah. but before that a lot, of, a lot of weird looks not what they do that's right and so what you want to do is, is that you want to go ahead if you have a state standard contract use it and you know that will be through the real estate commission if you do not and some of you do not uh we you know the the, the standard contract that you can use is uh, you want to look online and see if you can find something from a reputable title uh, title company or a title attorney where they have a standard contract, and mm -hmm. you can use that. Um, if you can't find anything there, then we can help you find something that is usable. Now, I realize that a contract for the sale of property is probably more than one to two pages. So if you've got somebody that says they use a one-pager or a two, a one -pager. be careful. Ooh. We see that a lot and we cringe because that a lot of things can go wrong when right. you got a one-page contract. Just think about it. Here's the basic, basic things that you need in your contract. You need to have a party to buy, a party to sell. You need to have the, the property identified. You need to have the amount that you're going to pay for the property. You need to have where you're going to deposit earnest money, how much earnest money you're depositing. You want to also have when you're going to close and if there's going to be any type of an option period or any type of inspection period. You know, Kyle doesn't even have any more fingers. So, like, you that's don't want me taking basis. my shoes off. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we really don't want that. But the uh, uh, those are basic basic things, and that doesn't cover things like you know what if you have a special case, what if you have a two week lease back, or you have tenants in the property and things like that. So you want to make sure that you have uh, a decent sized contract that is going to cover all of these issues. Um, and with that being said, it doesn't have to be thirty pages. It really shouldn't be thirty pages. You know. There's three, four, five pages is going to be able to cover most of this. So Luis came in with a fire question and one that okay. gets asked a lot. The million dollar question. Do you need to specify if your contract can be assigned? So here is the rule. Here is the general rule of thumb. All contracts can be assigned unless they state that they are non-assignable. What that means is this. Unless you see something in the contract that says explicitly, you cannot assign this, you can assign it. This is not one of those situations where if it doesn't say it, it might. This is the law we are talking about. If the contract 
does not say you can't do it. You can do it. You can do it. That's right. No reading between the lines. This isn't men talking to women, relationships, trying to read one another's minds. If the contract doesn't say it, you can do it. So the big thing to kind of take into account is like when you see a contract that you're going to assign, because we're wholesaling, so we're going to assign the contract. Uh, in Texas, the standard rule is, is that you fill out the name mm -hmm. of whoever you're buying this from. You fill out your name, whatever entity you're buying it in, whether you're buying it as an LLC, whether you're buying it in your own name, and you put and or assigns. And or assigns, you put that in there, and then it is well known to everybody that you have the option mm -hmm. to assign the contract. Not saying that you will, just saying that that is one of your options. Because when we're dealing with wholesaling, you are assigning your what's known as equitable interest in the property. You're not assigning, you're not selling the property, you're selling your equitable interest, which means you have the right to purchase mm -hmm. and you are giving that right to someone else. And so when you're dealing with, uh, with purchase contracts, you're looking first at the real estate commission, second for any kind of reputable, and I mean reputable is places like Fidelity, Stewart, Chicago Title. These are reputable title companies that are out there that are big and national. And if they have a generic contract uh, that they use in that state, go ahead and use it because that's probably where you're going to wind up closing it anyway. Yes. And so use their forms. That's don't make up the one because, again, you've got so many points that I don't have enough fingers and you're not going to fit that on one page. The other thing is is that the next contract that you have because people ask, well, what about my assignment contract? Is there a standard? There's not. There's really not a standard assignment contract because you know what? The real estate commissions don't cover assignment contracts, so they don't have a standard one for the state. Now, we do have one that we use. It has been used many, many times by reputable wholesalers here in Texas, uh, but it's not a Texas-specific contract. Um, and you can use that to assign because, remember, what you're assigning is your equitable interest in the in the property that you have on the contract. Mm -hmm. You're sending that to the buyer. They're paying you the assignment fee. So the things that you want to watch out for in there are you've got who you're assigning it to. Mm -hmm. They're going to go ahead and close on the contract. So you want to make sure that they are real buyers. They're not people that are going to go out there and, mm -hmm. and just kind of flake out on you. Mm -hmm. um, that you have them put up earnest money because if they break the agreement, you want to be able to go ahead and take that earnest money as mm -hmm. compensation. So their earnest money needs to match whatever earnest money you've put up in the purchase money. And, and then basically the day that they're going to get the thing closed and the spread between what they're paying and what you're buying it for, that's your assignment fee. Guard that with your life because that's what you make money on. Uh, there's, there's sometimes people give questions like, hey, what if I'm JVing? And I, I, I just started off, I want a JV with somebody so that I can go ahead and learn how to actually get a deal done because I'm scared or, you know, it's my first time. That's okay. Um, the big thing is that you got to understand is the money coming out of the sale or is it coming out of your assignment fee? And as much as you can, keep your assignment fee, make money. We mm -hmm. want you to make money. That's what we're here for. So, and then the big thing with the contracts is don't overcomplicate it. You know, like I talked about with the um, assignment, you know, if it doesn't say don't assign it. So go through and read the contracts, read them. Like don't, if you're going to ask us questions, we're going to say, please do not ask until you have read the entire contract. I'm not going to read it for you. I've already read it. One big thing is this, is that most of the contracts that are, most contracts that I've ever written are meant to be assignable. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking for somebody that is specifically put in language to say this is non-assignable. It doesn't mean that it's not there that because it's not typical. It means that that's what you're looking for to, to make sure that this isn't something that's going to breach the contract. Mm -hmm. um, if you have questions, you know, we're in the group. But yes, by all means, go through the contract, read through it, Try and understand it. If it's confusing, that's okay. I'm an attorney in Texas, not in the other 49 states. Mm -hmm. I can read. Um, I can interpret. I can give you the, the benefit of my years of experience and knowledge. 
but I am not an actual practicing attorney in New Mexico, Oklahoma, Kansas, Wyoming, Colorado, New Hampshire. I could do 49 of them, but I'm not. So mm -hmm. the big thing is, is that uh, I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, you know, that's part of what the group's for. And, you know, when it comes to your contract, you know, don't be afraid of it. This is what's going to make you money. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, look out for small certain things. Uh, but other than that, you know, get deals. Get deals, make money. So we're going to break it down real fast. Insert state name, real estate commission. Mm -hmm. Check there first to see if you have a basically a state certified um you know, contract. If they do have one, use that one. Remember, don't recreate the wheel because the more you confuse somebody else, the more trouble you're going to run into. This is easy. Don't overcomplicate it. If it doesn't say that you can't assign it in the contract, then you can assign it. Don't assume anything else. Remember, this isn't a relationship. You don't need to read anybody's mind. Right. Um, you know, make sure you read through the contract. Don't come to us with questions until you have read the contract. We've already read it. I'm not going to talk about something I've read again. So there you have it, the first day of C. But we wanted to talk about one thing before. You're probably wondering why there's a camera and some lighting in the back. And this is not because Rob's making his feature-length debut in the next Avengers movie. I am, though. He is, though. Yeah. You know, that's all part of the rocket, the yes. rocket ships. Yep, yeah, Thanos. So that's what Rob's doing with all the deals. But we are coming out with the ABCs, the Savvy Real Estate Investor, it's an academy, the ABCs of wholesaling. It's a deeper dive into all of this, and we are in the process of starting a beta group. So the course will be done here probably within the next couple of weeks, but to a small select group of individuals, we'll be rolling it out. So if you want to get part of that wait list, click below. Um, we have a, a bit.ly link that will get you to sign up, but if you want to be part of that, it's only going to be limited time before we start rolling it out to a larger audience. So if you want to be able to, to get in ground level and get it on the cheap, that's going to be your opportunity. So until next time, my savvy real estate investing friends, remember if it doesn't say it in the contract, you can do it. It's the best thing I can leave you with for now. So remember, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense.